friends, welcome to our special Advent HPC Cow. It's me, Miss Sarah. And it's me, Miss Tina. Let's say a quick prayer to start and then let's figure out what that word Advent sure. actually means. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all back here together virtually as cow. Thank you that we got uh, to have Thanksgiving this last week and got to spend some time with our, our families and and thanking you for the many ways that you bless us. I ask that that would continue this week, and particularly as we try to share your word this, uh, through this service. Amen. Amen. So what does Advent mean? Mm. The short version is the arrival of something or someone special, or a special event, like if you're waiting for something. Okay. But then there's the church version of Advent. Where we usually spell it with a big A. We make a big deal of it. Hmm. Who might we be waiting for in church? I, I think I heard him. Ah. I think so. Jesus is right, you guys. Advent's the season before Christmas. Okay. And it's when we get ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So it starts four Sundays before Christmas, and it's a time when we, as God's family, Pray and do other things to get our hearts ready for Jesus. So one of the things we do in church is to light an Advent wreath. And we have our own oh, here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> See, it's got four candles here, mm -hmm. and then one white one in the middle. And there's three purple and one pink. Mm -hmm. And we'll light one each week as we get closer and closer to Christmas. So each candle has a different thing that it represents. This week it's a purple candle, and it reminds us of hope, like Miss Sarah Schurz says. Uh, so we're going to take a look at a Bible verse about hope. We're actually going to look at Psalm 33, verse 20. All right, Bible here. Psalm 33, verse 20 says, We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. All right. And then we will typically say a short prayer as we light the candle. Eternal God, we thank you for the hope that this season brings, that a little baby can change the world and bring your love to us. Help us to remember that Jesus is the reason for this season, and not to lose hope when things get hard. Amen. One of my favorite ways to get ready for Christmas is to put out a nativity scene. Okay. I kind of collect them a little bit and have more than one. Um, I noticed today just in my office I have three. <laughs> uh, so let's, well, let's put one out here while we're getting ready. Okay, that sounds like fun. Do you have a, you said you have three, do you have a particular one in mind? <laughs> well this one is the whole, belongs to the whole church. Ah, I remember this one. Yes, uh, our friend Miss Judy Stone made it for us. It's really pretty. Uh, I think it's big enough that we'll be able to see it you know, I have little teeny ones. Sure. So we'll be able to see it even through the magic of the interwebs. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to put it all out at once. No? Of course. Why well, do it the easy way? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so just like we're lighting the Advent candle wreath, one candle at a time, we're going to gradually build up our nativity scene. So let's see who's down here. Let's see. Let's see. Got Mary. All right. I think I found Joseph. Carefully picking up Joseph. Yes. And an angel. Hmm. That feels like the very beginning of a story. Sounds like a very good place to start. It is. So we can find Mary's story in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, in the beginning of Joseph's story in Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. I like the Spark Story Bible because it kind of puts it all together okay. in one story, so we don't have to flip them through all of those pages, but if you want to at home, that's a lot of fun too. So this one's called, starts the story as the angel's visit. I've got Mary. She looks a little nervous, doesn't she? A little bit. <laughs> Mary was a young woman. She lived in a town called Nazareth and was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. One day, a tall and handsome man appeared in front of Mary. His clothes were brilliant white, his hair was dark and curly, and his eyes sparkled like lights. 
Mary knew the man must be an angel. Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. Mary stepped backward. His deep voice scared her. Don't be afraid, he said. God sent me to tell you that you are going to have a son, who you'll name Jesus. He is going to be very important to many people. A son? But I'm not married yet, she said. How is this going to happen? The Holy Spirit will come to you, the angel replied. And your son will be the son of God. The son of God? My son? <laughs> Mary thought about all these things. It didn't seem possible, but she believed anything was possible for God. I am God's servant. I'll do whatever God says, she said. Her mind was racing. What will Joseph think? Would he believe her? Mary was nervous. When Mary told Joseph about the angel and about giving birth to God's son, he did just what she was afraid he would do. He didn't believe her. He talked about not marrying her anymore. Mary felt so sad. But she remembered what the angel said and she trusted God. The next day, something wonderful happened. Joseph came to her and said, an angel came to me in a dream. He said, Joseph, don't be afraid to make Mary your wife. She is going to have a son and you're going to name him Jesus. He is going to save people from their sins. We got him talking there. Mary smiled a big smile. She was so happy that tears of joy filled her eyes and trickled down her cheeks. She felt Joseph's love again. I am not scared for you to be my wife, Mary, he said. I will be with you and we will name the baby boy Jesus. And they're happy. <laughs> if you get a chance, I really think you should read the Luke one because Mary says a very cool prayer that they call like her song. So I think if you get a chance, look that up together. Okay. So, hmm, angel visitors. I can't say that I've ever really had one of those. Have you? Not that I know of, but Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2 says, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. So maybe, I don't know. We've had strangers. Our church is actually pretty good at welcoming strangers, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that none of them has ever told me, anyway, good news that, like, Jesus is coming. Yeah, me either. But it does make you think of a song. Imagine that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so this Amy sent us a song about the good news of Christmas. Let's see it. Good news, children, children in the 
stand up. If you want to be super dorky like me, you could build a stable. I just used an Amazon box that I had around. I'm imagining the nativity scene on a refrigerator. That, that would be beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but find, you know, find something fun. Do make it a cool family project. Work on it together and really would like to see what y'all do. Yeah, I really do hope we get to see some of those. Come on, send in your pictures. Yes can put them in the private group, that way you don't have to show the whole wide world. Sure. Um, so we have one candle so far, mm -hmm. reminds us to hope. And we have Mary and Joseph being visited by an angel. Okay. To tell them they're going to be the earthly parents of God's son. I, I can't, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty cool stuff. I can't wait to see what we get to add in next week. More room on the table. Lots of room on the table. All right, so let's pray. Okay. Dear God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for a special day to give you thanks. Uh, and we thank you for the good news of Jesus is coming. Help us to be ready when he does arrive and that our hearts are ready for him. That it, Remind us that it's not all just... Christmas trees and decorations and cookies that it is about the birth and arrival of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 